Hey, my name is April and I'm the peaceful wife. Today I want to talk about the victim mentality. And in our culture today, this is very pervasive. And the idea is that I can't do whatever it is that God is asking me to do because these people are holding me back or my circumstances are too difficult or I don't have the things I need, the resources that I need. And so I can't do what God wants me to do. Or I am just a victim. I have no power. And I'm at the mercy of all these other people and at the mercy of our culture and society. And unfortunately, this is a very destructive mindset. And the idea is other people have to change. I have no responsibility for myself. I can't do um, what I should do because of all these other things and I'm I'm a victim I just have to sit and wait for other people to change I have to wait for circumstances to change and other people owe me and they need to do these things for me I can blame other people I have I am not empowered myself I am not responsible and with this mindset until other people change in the way I think they should or the church changes or society changes, or circumstance change, then I can take myself off the hook for the things that God is asking me to do. I can justify my sin because, well, these other people and these circumstances aren't favorable for me. This is not a Christ-centered mentality, and this is not what the Bible teaches. And so I know that it's very, very normal for people to blame others and to feel powerless and to expect other people to change first. But the reality is we don't have control over other people. and We don't have control over every circumstance and we don't have control over society or the church. But what we do have control over is ourselves. And we can allow God to have control over us. And when we completely yield to him, we are not victims anymore. This is great news. In Christ, I can know I am not powerless. I am not without help. I am not without hope. I am not without resources. No matter what my situation may look like, if I am in Christ, all that he has and all that he is belongs to me. I have his promises. I think there's over 4,000 of them in scripture. Those are gifts and treasures and I have a lot of power in Christ when I claim his promises and cling to them. I serve a sovereign Lord and if my God, if my picture of God is that he is wimpy and small and impotent, and that I have to make everything happen or that other people have to make things happen. That's a sad way to live. If I serve Jesus and he is my Lord, the Bible says he is sovereign. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. He is sovereign over everything. So I don't have to feel like I have no power. I have the ear of the sovereign God and King of the entire universe. I have access to the Holy of Holies 24 seven. I can go to him at any time. Now I do need to take care of my sin first, repent of any sin. But then when I've done that, I can come before the throne boldly and with confidence asking for the things that I need with pure motives in order to accomplish his purposes. If my goal is to do God's will, to please him, then he will provide abundant resources for me and all I need and the power I need, the ability that I need to do what he wants me to do in his timing. I can take responsibility for my spiritual well-being, my emotions, my decisions, because those belong to me. And I can be whole and healed in Christ. I can choose to receive all of the blessings and the healing and the truth and wisdom and love that God has for me in his word. Let's look at the example of Paul. Paul was in a lot of really difficult situations. He was in prison a lot. That's where he wrote most of the New Testament. 
he was shipwrecked, he had probably rickets, which was where he was so malnourished that his bones and his legs started to kind of bow. He had been beaten many times. He had very poor eyesight. He had been um, tortured. He had been in a lot of extremely difficult situations. He was stoned. They tried to stone him to death. He actually did die and see heaven and come back. And yet, in spite of all of his medical problems and the constant persecution that he faced, Paul did not have a victim mindset. Well, if these Jews would stop persecuting me, maybe I could spread the gospel. Or, you know, if only these people would just treat me better, then maybe I could do God's will or I could obey God. No, Paul didn't let anything stop him from obeying God and he trusted God completely and we can do the same thing. Let's talk about some verses in the Bible that tell us how we are more than conquerors. Okay, Romans 8, 35 through 37, which was written by Paul. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And then in Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, yes, we are in a spiritual battle, but we are not going to lose. If we are in Christ, we are on the winning side. So Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. John 15, 5. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. 1 John 5, 4. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Here are some verses about victory for us as believers in Christ. Deuteronomy 20, 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. That's through Christ. And when he says, I can do all things, that means all things that God desires me to do, all things that are part of God's will. John 16, 33, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That's Jesus speaking. James 1, 12 through 14, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. There are so many verses about how in Christ, we as believers are victorious over sin, over the world, over adversity. And then Hebrews 11 is the Faith Hall of Fame that describes so many people from the Old Testament and their faith and what God has done through them. And then toward the end in verse 32, the author says, And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jepheth, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. 
Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised since God provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, this is now chapter 12, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And then in chapter 12, it talks about us not growing weary, but that we would continue to press on. I don't want to see any of us succumb to a victim mentality. That is the desire of the enemy of our souls, because if we become victims in our minds, we become powerless and we become paralyzed and we are not useful to God. But when we live by faith and when our eyes are on Christ, he can change us. He can give us the power. He can change our circumstances to accomplish his will as we trust him. And when we face adversity, we can know that God will use even that for our good. So nothing can stop us. If God is for us, who can be against us? If he is for us, he will give us the ability to do what he wants us to do. No one can stop his plan or his will from being done. And when we cooperate with him, he will give us the power. We are not without hope. We are not without power. We are not victims that have to wait on other people to change. We have Jesus and we have God and we have his power and his word and his spirit and so we are more than conquerors. And I hope we'll be encouraged today to remember that and to go out from a place of victory that Jesus has already won for us. The battle is already won. Jesus is the winner. And all we need to do now is to experience his victory in us every day as we let him live in and through us. Thank you so much for watching. You can also find me at my blogs, peacefulwife.com and peacefulsinglegirl.com. And you're welcome to subscribe. Have a great day.